Hey there, how are you doing? Thank you so much for checking out this video. I want to talk about how to format your post inside WordPress. A lot of people assume that it's obvious and hence miss out on a few crucial things. I've had lots of clients who don't do it right and hence affect their search rankings. Now the first thing you got to do is obviously add your title and the rest of the blog post inside your WordPress blog post editor. Now, you might probably write this blog post in a Microsoft Word document or a Google document. You'll copy it and paste it here. That's fine. But if you're adding your title, be sure to add your focus keyword at the beginning of the title. Now, this is not a hard and fast tool, so don't get obsessed with it. But if you can, do it. Then you would format your paragraphs in a way that they're easy to skim and read or for people who are coming and reading on the web. Maximum two to three lines per paragraph. If it's a long post like this one, it makes sense to add what is called as a table of contents or at least a list of items that people can click on and scroll down straight to that piece of text that they're interested in. So I have created a list like that. I will show you in how to do that in a while. You will have your subheadings set up in H2. The main title up there would take up H1 and any other subheading in, underneath this particular subheading will be H3 and H4 and so on and that is the cadence you got to follow that's when your post is properly structured now you have images here in this particular blog post these images are just screenshots of these particular website builders that I've been listing to get these screenshots all I have to do is get to that particular site that I'm talking about on Mac I have to click on command shift 4 and take that screenshot now the problem with these screenshots at least on Mac is the fact that they are extremely large and you don't want to upload large images onto your blog because that slows down your site and also takes up a lot of disk space on your hosting you have your screenshot here rename that screenshot to what it is that that screenshot is about which is a good SEO practice as well then click open that particular screenshot go to tools and click on adjust size and you will notice now that the size is around 2686 pixels wide which is extremely large and also it takes up a lot of space so I'm going to turn this into something where it says 1200 pixels and click on OK so it kind of reduces in size but it's still large enough for the blog post so I'm going to do that and where I need to upload that image I'm going to come down there and upload that image right underneath that subheading talks about that particular website or app or whatever it is that you're blogging about so when you have to add an image get to Gutenberg click on that little plus icon click on image click on upload and find that image and click on open and it will load that image once your images are loaded it's a best practice to add what is called as an alt text which is again great for SEO click on that image there which is already loaded you will find to your right side panel you are done you would have to repeat this process for each of the images that you upload having said that inside your blog post there are opportunities for you to link out to credible sources of information where you're getting data from let's say you're writing on some stats or you're pointing out to some sort of research it makes great sense to point to that research or if you're mentioning another blogger or if you're mentioning another brand or if you're mentioning another influencer it makes sense to point to them linking out to them not only is a good practice adds more credibility to your blog but also pings them and lets them know that you've pointed to them so that kind of works on a reciprocal basis not that it will always happen but there are chances at least they get to know that you're there that you've written about them while you're at it you can also link back to some older blog post that you have or when it's relevant so let's say I have a blog post written on landing pages I would select this piece of text that says landing pages click on the hyperlink type in landing pages find any blog post written previously that I can point to and then make sure that it opens in a new tab and click on why create pages is another blog post that I've written previously and I'm now internally linking to that particular blog post which is a great SEO practice again towards the end of the blog I would have to add what is called as an SEO breadcrumb for your reference I'm using DV and Yoast SEO plugin for me to add a SEO breadcrumb all I have to do is again go click on the little plus icon choose Yoast breadcrumbs and it will pre-format and add it for me here now you could be using rank math or all-in-one SEO or any plugin of that sort and they will have something similar to this or you have third-party plugins that will allow you to add uh, SEO breadcrumb to your blog post 
or even site wide if you know what you're doing for now i'm removing this blog because it's already there add a call to action to your blog post because you got to be blogging for a purpose if you're doing blogging for your business you want leads out of all these efforts that you're taking while you're editing your blog post it's also an opportunity for you to optimize your blog for seo and readability in my case i'm using yoast seo plugin so i would have to add just the focus key phrase and follow the prompts or the suggestions that it gives me try and optimize my blog for search be sure to include your meta description here as well and on to the right side panel you will have two tabs called post and block on your post tab get where you see a permalink here you need to designate a url slug the best practice to do this have a url slug that is fairly similar to the focus keyword that you're writing the entire blog post on so in my case it's going to be no code website builders so my url slug is no code dash website dash builders my blog is going to live on fetchprofits.com slash no code dash website dash builders finally get into the part where i have a table of contents listed out for making it easy for people to click on and get there the first thing you need to create that is to select a subheading first and to the right side panel on the block tab get to the part where it says advanced click on advanced then drop in an html anchor HTML anchor in simple speak only means that it's a simple word that you will designate so that you will add that as a hyperlink onto that list item so that when people click on it, the page crawls up and they get right to the part where they want to go. So in my case, I've added Webflow for the subheading that says Webflow. And while I'm here, I get to this list item where I mentioned Webflow, select that piece of text. This would have been a piece of text before I added the HTML tag. So select that hyperlink there and click on edit and you will see that I've added hashtag HTML anchor, which is hashtag Webflow in this case. And you repeat that process for each of the items that you have, make it easier for not only your customers who are reading your blog post, but also great for SEO search. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. This is Ash from Fetch Profits signing out.